video and as you can see, Dewhurst. Today I thought we'll do something a little different and we're going to take a look at how these Dewhurst buttons are actually, well how, how they're made, like what goes into the workings of them. Well I say how they're made but like how they, how they work, so like when you press it, what's actually going on behind the scenes. You can see I've got a couple of extra face plates here but that's just because why not, we're going to have a look at those later. But we're going to start off with a simple one. This is a new is a neo entry indicator. Great start to the video. This is a no entry indicator, and as you can see, it's got this somewhat reflective transparent cover on it. It's got the no entry legend underneath. So let's take this apart and see how it is composed. So on the back here. You can't see really, if I shine the light through you can. There is a circuit board in there, it appears to, this one appears to have the circuit board actually fixed in place, so I'm not going to be able to take that apart or anything. If you turn it round and I put a light in, you can get some light in there, it's not perfect but you can get a little bit of light in there. But anyway, to take this apart all you've got to do is just take cover off, it really is that simple, there's not a whole lot to it. Inside you can see the legend, this is actually just like paper, and to take this off just find a corner, pull it off, find a corner, pull the blank off, and you can see the circuit board. This circuit board has got a grand total of 8 LEDs, by far the most out of any of the components I'm going to show today. That'd be two and a half times the most. As you can see, it does look like it's fixed in position, so we can't actually see what's going on behind the scenes of these LEDs. But you can see a few items here, not particularly complex by the looks of things, but this, these would probably all be naturally off, and then if the lift went fireman service or out of service, then it would go on, I think. Maybe it's just fireman service. Definitely would go on in fireman service, I think. Not so sure about out of service. They probably would just turn the lift off, to be honest, but never mind that. So there's a pretty simple uh, system for this. Be cool if the circuit boards could be taken out so we could actually see how it works, but it looks like it's fixed in, so I'm not going to try and take it out in case I cause any issues. You can see here we have three face plates, which I will go into a moment, one of these face plates. A very special face plate. See if you recognise that one. Anyway, looking here we can see these two buttons here. Exactly the same except for the face plate and the missing metal bit on this one. These are pretty simple. You just push it down, this pushes down on the contact is here, completes the circuits, naturally open contacts, and the fun stuff happens on this circuit board. The circuit board is pretty easy to be taken out, it's just a pull tab. I'll be taking this one out later in fact because I want to show something. And a little bit of tarnishing but it's nothing that can't be taken care of if it gets bad. But for now, don't really need to worry about it. It can just stay how it is for now. Pretty simple button system. If we take a look at the incomplete button, this one's got a different circuit board mind, I'll compare them in a minute. You can see you've got your faceplate here, which is just, it doesn't, it doesn't press or anything, it just exists. You can see here, these two circular things are the actual buttons if you like, these press. They make the circuits. This board has two LEDs, so this button would not light up while it's not selected. This one would only light up when it uh, has been pressed. And if we look on the back of this board, you've got just your solitary two pins here. Not a whole lot going on. This is a C3S board. And if we use the pull tab, we can pull out this board. Like so, Let's see the casing again. This one's got some tarnishing in the connectors for the contacts, but again, don't need to worry too much. 
take a closer look at the board then, on the inside. Once we get a focus, as you see there's a 30, there's 3300 resistors. So, there you go, it's a 3300. <laughs> Schindler making an appearance in Dewhurst, no, just kidding. Um, yeah, there's two, there's two LEDs here. These would light up red, as denoted by the colour of the circuit board, and you'll find out why the colour of the circuit board is important later, because there might be more than one colour. But anyway, if we compare this with the circuit board here, we pull this one out. See, it does come out. Despite this being on my complete buttons, you can still take the board out. This one's kind of stuck in. You can actually see behind the button there. See the faceplate in there. We compare these two circuit boards. Let's see what you can spot that's different. If I can hold this one well. Let's see how many differences you can spot. You can see there's actually three LEDs here and four resistors. 3300s and 2001. There's also a digit font 18.01 on this circuit board. And the reason for this is this circuit board here, again it's red that the LEDs light up. This middle LED, LED3, actually stays on when the button is not selected and when you press the button it goes out, LED1 and 2 come on and it makes the button light up brighter. So I'll stick up a video on screen probably about now of the lifts at Mercury Hotel in Inverness. That's the sort of system I believe they use, where it lights up when idle but not particularly bright and it lights up a lot brighter when you press it. That's because it goes from one LED to two LEDs. On the back of these boards, you can see there is a bit of difference. See, it actually denotes on the C3D here, with the three LEDs, it actually denotes when the pluses and minus are. It doesn't do that on the C3S for some reason. And there you go. C3D. You've got a minus and a plus, and a minus and a plus. One of these will be your naturally closed, one of these will be your naturally open. Anyway, there's your circuit boards for that. There's your up button. Yeah, look, it's complete. We've definitely not got a circuit board missing. <laughs> we move on then to the big boy, the jumbo alarm. This one is. This one I can actually take the front off. That's the thing with that up button. I would have taken the front off it and not had to bring through the incomplete button. But it's kind of very rigidly stuck. But anyway, taking this off, you've got your metal cover, which is all fairly standard. You've got your big faceplate right here, which is a big alarm faceplate. And here's where it gets interesting. Inside, it doesn't go straight to those little white button things. Can you see this plastic thing in here? Now these buttons are substantially bigger and therefore they need something to just extend it so that the faceplate can actually be pressed in the panel and it made this little thing for it and it actually works really effectively. They just still press it just like a normal do her button, you wouldn't notice the difference unless I actually showed you this, which is what I'm doing now. This can come out just like that, just pops out. And you can see you just get back to the usual system. This thing's a little bit more shaky. I think the circuit is the circuit board loose, or is it just the it's just the way the button is? And you can see inside 17.52 a yellow circuit board. Again, 3300, 3300, 3300, 1002, or 2001, but upside down is the alternative. And in fact, I think that's probably what it is. It's 2001, but upside down, I guess. Yeah, difficult to really see. Oh, that one looks like it's the right way up, 1002. Difficult to see. This circuit board is the exact same as the one I showed you earlier. Maybe the LEDs look a little different, I think, do they? The LEDs look different. Yeah, the LEDs look slightly different. But the way it works is, the is exactly the same. Middle LED, 
lights up in ordinary service and the button's not pressed, and the button's pressed in, one and two light up, and of course, the alarm rings. And again, exact same pull tab system, just pulls the board right out. And then you're left with just the um, casing. Here's the board. And here's the back. But anyway, I'm going to now show you why the colour of the circuit board is actually important. We're going to put in the red circuit board that it likes to have possession of. You have to pull the you have to pull the pull tab back for it to work. There you go. That's the board in. This is what this button would have lit up like in regular service. And yeah, this is it lighting up red. Now, if I turn that off, we turn the button around, pull out the circuit board that's there. I'm trying not to damage the pins. I hope I don't damage the pins doing that. We put in the yellow circuit board now. Oh, this is a tight fit. The circuit board is a tight fit in the button. It will go in. If we now put in this yellow board, lights up yellow. And it lights up a different colour this time. So the colour of the board indicates the colour that the button will light up when it is pressed. When it is idle, that might not necessarily be the case, as is the case with my Duress panel has, pan that has power to it, when it's idle it lights up white, however when it is pressed it lights up the colour of the circuit boards, green circuit board for up lights up green, red circuit board for down of course lights up red. So as you can see, the colour of the circuit board is useful for telling you how to, um, what colour the LEDs in it are going to light up. Just now pull this out again. And that's probably about it, because, I mean, you can see, if I zoom out, all the components that make up these buttons. And the thing is, these face plates I've got here for the smaller buttons, these can all be used in the small button. If the ring wasn't on this one, even this one could be used as well. It's got the red plastic, this one would always light up red, I think. Unless someone decided it would be funny to stick blue LEDs inside there, in which case it might light up purple or something. What would probably happen here is you'd have white LEDs in here and this thing would just light up red. Just like it does when I put my torch to it. Well, I say it's a torch, it's a pen, but there you go. Ignore the fact that it's a pen. Lights up red. So now I think we are going to put these back together. I'm going to walk you through step by step putting each of these back together. We're going to start with the incomplete button. So, the order of this... You don't, it doesn't matter when you put the circuit board in, but... Circuit board clips in through the back. You have to pull out the pull tab just to get it and go that last bit in. From here, we've only, we only really can choose a faceplate now. Had the open in it, stick the open back in. This button is now done as far as I can take it. No entry indicator. We stick in piece of paper number one, make sure it's nice and flat. Stick in piece of paper number two, make sure it's nice and flat. Stick on the front, clips into place, no entry indicator. Complete! The alarm button. A little bit of order necessary to this, but before we do the alarm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be friendly to my up button. Have your C3D back. Have your C3D back and be happy, um, up button. If you're wondering, by the way, what happens if I put this in without the plastic bit? It can't even, it can't even press it because the faceplate's so big. Anyway, I'm going to put it in the circuit board first. Usual method. I've done it wrong. The thing with these circuit boards is, I wasn't really showing it, but you've got these little lips here, if you just try and put it over the top of those, just going to sit there like that, you won't be able to get it any further. And when you turn the button over, bye bye circuit board. So, 
you have to do this a certain way. You have to push it. Oh dear, you have to push it under the lip. It's got a sort of guide track going so it won't go below it. Once it's under the lips, it's half secure. Pull back your pull tab, push down, wait for the click. Secure. Stick this in, you just stick it down, give it a nice push, and it's in place straight away. It just slots into the sort of pressable parts quite nicely. Stick it on your faceplate. Stick that on. Do that click. And the alarm button is now complete. And that is probably going to do it for the video. That's all of the buttons I have to show you. We have the alarm and the open, those are complete buttons. We have our incomplete open, which the braille is now... I say the braille, it's called the faceplate. The faceplate is now in slightly the wrong position on, but we'll allow it. I'll display it right when I get there. We've got extra brails. We have a no entry indicator. And who can forget this? Who can ever forget Mr. Matt and Mr. Chi Dewhurst Keyring? That there is a video up on of on my channel right now. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this video I think. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And with that being said, that is gonna be it, and I advise you if you wanna watch another video of mine next, which I really hope you do. The video of that, if you haven't watched it already, please go watch it. With that being said, thank you for watching, that is gonna be it.